Okay, well, that's it. Um, and how did you feel about it and how it came out? Well, uh, we're pointing out that another clue has emerged since the time we recorded this a few weeks ago. Another clue? Uh, another clue. Uh, okay. The artist Jim Sanborn announced uh, four more letters in part four, the word east. Uh, in front of the word northeast. So um, I, uh, yeah, we just didn't have time to update the slide. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Klaus, what did you think? Yes, well, uh, well, actually, I knew the presentation, but <laughs> I think uh, it, it came out well. So I'm quite content at the moment. Uh, I hope the people who watched it liked it too. Okay, so we had a uh, we actually had a scavenger hunt. The point of the scavenger hunt was to get people to watch all the videos, and it, there would be a trivia question from each video. And so um, I came up with the trivia question for this video. It would be in famous and not so famous unsolved codes. What is the name of the cryptogram that only has geometric shapes in a booklet with no page numbers? I know, I know. <laughs> mm, I think I also know it. <laughs> is it. Is it five letters? Yeah. It's five letters. Yes. Yeah. Good. Do you want us to say the answer? or? Um... Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. Yeah. And I don't think this will air for a while. Okay. Starts with the letter C. Yes, <laughs> followed by a Y. Yeah. You can lob the rest of the answer to me. Yeah. Lob, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm kind of hoping maybe someone at Dragon Con has seen that booklet and will go, oh, yeah, it's from this game in the 1980s, and it was a, a, a hint booklet when you were wandering around this particular game, and when you were in this room with these symbols, you had to do this and this. But if there was such a game, we we have not identified it. Yes. Did you uh, did you update? Uh, did you have any update on the uh, timing of the book, or the process of uh, getting it to publishing? It will be uh, released at least on the UK version of Amazon in December. For the US version of Amazon, we know it's coming, but we don't have a, a date yet. Is there any chance it might be sooner? No, it'll probably be okay. after. It would have to be later. It has to be all later. All the paperwork has been signed and this and that and the other. Hmm. Yeah, it's coming. Is Amazon the publisher or just uh, it's just just the marketplace? We're working with uh, Constable Robinson, which is a uh, little brown in the UK. And so they already have everything set up there. Okay. Uh, it's a publisher I worked with before for my mammoth book, Secret Codes and Cryptograms. Okay. And that's, uh, yeah. Little Brown is one of the most renowned uh, publishing companies in the world. So, uh, for example, Nelson Mandela has published a book there and several Nobel Prize laureates. So it's a very uh, Pretty good, um, a pretty renowned publishing company, and we, we are very proud that our book is published there. Yeah, it's just uh, there's situations of uh, the way that the rights and work on either side of the Atlantic pond. So there's just some paperwork that's being straightened out for the American side first before it can be on the U.S. Amazon, and I think we'll be on the. In in Europe, they've got UK, and the other big Amazon is in Germany. I think they're a German Amazon. Right? Is that right, Klaus? Or is it uh, yes, I think so. It's probably the second biggest in Europe. Right. Yeah, but the reviews for the book are coming out really well. We've been very pleased with the very kind things that people have been saying about the book. And anyone that's interested in seeing those can go to codebreaking-guide.com. We have everything listed. We got uh, Sir Dermot Turing, the nephew of the famous cryptographer Alan Turing, who worked at Bletchley Park and uh, 
came up with ways of cracking the Enigma ciphers based on information he got from the Polish, Polish guys, Marian Hrievski and, and the others. But uh, to have Sir Dermot Turing uh, say kind things about the book was something that was very touching. And we also mm -hmm. have um, um, many other famous cryptographers. We have Whitfield Diffie from Diffie-Hellman Algorithm. Mm -hmm. He came up and he said something. And Philip Zimmerman uh, also said very kind things about mm -hmm. the book. Ed Scheidt, who you, you heard about, the CIA mm -hmm. cryptographer as well. Well, uh, I, do you, first of all, do you have a, um, a favorite cryptogram in the book? And secondly, do you prefer the solved or the unsolved cryptograms? Oh, man, I, I, I like code that can solve, but um, cryptos continues to have a special place in my heart. So we have a whole mm -hmm. appendix just on cryptos. How about you, Klaus? Do you have a favorite? Uh, yes, well, of course, the Voynich manuscript is one of my favorites because it's the unsolved document over 500 years old. Uh, numerous people have tried to or have examined it and have tried to break it, but to no avail. That's probably the biggest mystery we have in cryptography. But there are others. Uh, we included, uh, we deliberately included a few lesser known ones, uh, uh, such as this uh, cigarette case cryptogram or this Ulster bottle post mystery. I think these are interesting because not so many people have looked at them so far. So there's certainly a better chance uh, that they will be solved in the near future. And I hope this will happen with the one or the other. Um, are you aware of any um, uh, special uh, special efforts to try to get this more into the hands of young people and get young people engaged in this? Would you have an opportunity with the schools or uh, with uh, outside activities for young people? Uh, any schools that want me to come speak or speak virtually right now, uh, I'm available. And we have on our website a whole section about speaking and topics that we can speak on. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I've given presentations at schools uh, many times before. And while it's, of course, uh, interest, uh, important to attract young people, well, uh, these conferences, Ilonka and I attend, like the one in Washington, the, the NSA Crypto History Conference, uh, they are mainly older people. So it should be a goal to attract more young people to these conferences. And I, I think there are enough young people who are interested in things like these, but uh, we need to involve them and encourage them to give presentations or write papers and things like that. And in my view, that's an important uh, task we have at the moment. And, and our book is not just targeted at people with college degrees, but for uh, anyone, including children. One of the target audiences is people who may have been going through their attic or old family effects and found a postcard that is encrypted by, say, a great great grandmother. And they want to know what it says, but they don't want to post it online. And in our book, we present a lot of information about how to identify which types of code systems may have been used at different times of history. And then what someone can identify what kind of system was used, then how to craft that system. So uh, there's, and, and I'm just very proud of the book, and Klaus did a wonderful job here of collating so many actual practical examples, encrypted postcards, actual encrypted letters, actual encrypted messages that prisoners tried to send for when they were in prison, and the prison guards kind of picked them up. Uh, actual messages that were um, gang codes or uh, from the Irish uh, Republican Army. And and so I, I think there's a, a lot of fun stories that kids will really uh, find of interest. If you are just starting out with uh, cryptography, um, what what would your advice what would your advice be to anybody just starting out? Um, read our book because uh, yes. it's definitely <laughs> targeted to that. Uh, and, and there are other books. I mean, Simon Singh's book, Code Book, is, is excellent. But Klaus and I really set out to write 
a book that was a comprehensive uh, coverage of this, of how to learn about codes, of, of how to crack these things. And we also provide many lists of other books, other resources, as someone gets more and more into this hobby, uh, where they can go to learn more about the different aspects of cryptography. And when did this, um, when did the process start for pulling this book together? Um, I did just get, well, when did get an uh, idea of the timeline of how far back it goes, and, and we, we sort of know how far forward in the future it probably will go. About three years, uh, Klaus and I were on a field trip heading to Virginia to see the home of the Beale Ciphers, which is another topic I've, I've given talks about at DragonCon. And it was a multi-hour road trip. And so we're talking about everything under the sun. And <clears throat> one of the things we were talking about was we wish there was a book that covered all these things, that was uh, an opening uh, coverage and that covered practical examples and also covered more recent stuff that you know, exciting ways of, of cracking new codes. And um, by the time we were done with our road trip, we're like, we need to write this book. <laughs> Yes, so uh, it's uh, three years ago, almost three years ago. But uh, this doesn't mean that it always takes uh, three years to write a book. Uh, I've written other books before, and it did, didn't take me three years. So one year is might be enough if you know what you want and if you find a publishing company. And if they accept what you are suggest suggesting, so one year is usually enough. And especially with us being co-authors and having to communicate across the Atlantic yes. and working out time zones. And we were both busy. Uh, we both have regular day jobs. We were both, uh, before pandemic, had speaking schedules where we're flying around to different conferences. So it became tricky trying to coordinate schedules. But we did it. Hmm. But it does sound uh, like a pretty special project uh, stretching back for three years. Yes, it, it was certainly a special project. It was, uh, as I said, it's not my first book, but uh, it's completely from all the other, uh, completely different from all the others I wrote. It's the first time that I uh, wrote a book with a co-author, and so the process is different. It makes some things easier, but others get more complicated. So basically, it's a different story. But I'm sure this is not uh, the the last book we we have written together. So my experience uh, altogether was quite good. So I think there's room for more publications of this kind in the future. Yeah. Well, I would think with, uh, uh, with the pandemic that would open up more time, uh, more time to do the writing, but maybe most of the writing was done by then. Yes. It yeah. certainly was. But anyway, I, I think we profited from the pandemic, it would have taken us longer to finish without <laughs> this break we had. Yeah, and we also have to thank our reviewers who spent yes. many, many hours going through. Mm -hmm. And it's hard, it's hard enough to proofread a book, but to proofread a chapter that has ciphers in it. So you're trying to proofread every letter of the cipher and then make sure that this number correlates properly with this number, and th they just did a great job. And the pandemic, in a bizarre way, helped them too, because they were able to have more time to, to go through this. But we, we definitely cannot thank our reviewers enough for the time that they put in. I completely agree. Do you have any uh, future projects in mind that you can talk about at this point? Well, we'd love to do a kid's book, yeah, uh, just for, for really young kids, a, a, a shorter version of this book. Yes, I'm going to update a German book I wrote a couple of years ago. It's also about crypto history, but it's not much about code breaking. It's more about the history, how um, encryption evolved over the centuries. And uh, this is, well, the, it will be the fourth edition. The book has been around for 
16 years now and now the fourth edition needs to be done. Okay. Well, um, I guess at this point, I, I, I go ahead and wrap things up. But if you have any final thoughts, uh, please let me know. Uh, Ilanka, would you like to start? Uh, I am really missing Dragon Con this weekend. It feels very, very strange for it to be Labor Day and be, to be here in Maryland and not in Atlanta. I've been going to Dragon Con for 20 years now. And I miss Dragon Con so much. I miss the costumes. I miss the different sessions. And so this at least, it gives me a, a fix, <laughs> a Dragon Con fix. So um, thank you very much for inviting me. I, I'm, I'm glad I got to kind of share some of my crypto knowledge this year, even if I couldn't be there in person. Did you see what we did for the parade? No, we shot, I didn't. What we happened? shot one person at a time and then strung all the video together. Did you have some people with the, the cult of the carpet wearing uh, their... I their don't style? know if we had that this year. <laughs> I don't know. But everything came together so quickly, and yet we've been getting a lot of uh, good compliments on it. Uh, but, I mean, the, these live panels were announced less than a week before they yeah, started. Yeah. So it was all a crush. It was really a crush yeah. this year. Yeah, we gave um, a talk so, at the Skeptics Track on Friday that yeah. I think we shipped, what, Klaus, we shipped the video, like, what, a week before... Yes. Thought, yeah. Would you, uh, Klaus, do you have some closing thoughts? Uh, yeah, well, I've never been at DragonCon because it's a long trip. It's on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. So I'm very glad that I had uh, the chance to speak at DragonCon this year. And I hope uh, in the future I will be, uh, uh, I will be able to uh, attend the DragonCon on site would be a very interesting experience. It's uh, it's 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 quite quite huge, quite large. <laughs> okay, I can imagine that with uh, sixty or eighty thousand people. Yes, um, I'm sure it's uh, a special event. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you very very much once again. Uh, thanks uh, thanks to everyone for the their efforts in uh, Dragon Con goes virtual. And we hope to see each other in person next year. Okay. So I'll sign off. My pleasure. Nice to talk to you. Goodbye. Bye.